I'm very much enjoying the opportunity to present to you these few words on my take of Judaism. As I've studied now for 40 years, you get deep into the flavor, much, much beyond the linear approach, but into the flavor and the taste that can go with it. One develops a taste for the simplicity, for a return to the essences, the letters, the frequencies that these letters produce in sounds. It's a metaphysical system, a system much like Sufism or the fourth way of um, uh, Gurdjieff and Uspensky. It's a system much like uh, Osho, formerly known as Rajanish. It's a system of approach like Krishnamurti. It's not much different except you're Jewish. And you have a Jewish soul, and that Jewish soul can reach for you an absolute, much higher than all the other previously stated methodologies. For this, you must know the Hebrew letters of the alphabet. Primarily, know only the Aleph. The yud on top, the vav in the middle, and the yud on the bottom. Or, that's the way it's expressed in chokhmah. But in bina, it may be expressed as a yud, a vav, and a dalit on the bottom. And to understand these differences is a major task. To understand these fundamental differences is the major opus of the work of Kabbalah. Without these understandings, you're not a Kabbalist. You're also not a Kabbalist if you're not Jewish. What constitutes a Jew? Is another story. But if you're not Jewish, don't even attempt the Jewish approach. It's not for you. And if you are Jewish, you never have to leave the first letter of the Torah. Bereshis. Barashis. Created six. Rearrange that bara to ever, and you have the word for penis. The word shish is the word six. Six is the sephirot of zir and pin. The yesod. The entire thing is a sexual phenomenon. As brought down to us through what's the apparent sin of Adam and Hava. When one understands the tikkun habris, one understands Judaism. It's a methodology for the potency of the body to be understood better than any other system. 
This comes in at the bris on the eighth day for a Jewish male. It also comes in in the 72 days before the seed comes out of the male for impregnation that it's formed in the brain at the place of the tefillin of the head. When one understands these things, one doesn't have to go any further. It's a teshuva, a return to these things, to the essences of the body. There are non-Jewish methodologies, like in the book Anti-Oedipus, where each organ of the body is a sexual organ that there's no underlying essence spot for this sexuality and this may be because the generality reflects in its multiplicity what the singularity has in its acute focus. The entire body is a sexualization as described in the word Barishis, Aver Shis, the foundation of the Aver. Aver. So when we understand and return to our letters, to our sexualities, to our essences, we're returning shuva. Everything comes out of the drop, the yud. The yud is this little drop, this bindu, it's put there in Hinduism. The Bindu drop in the brain. It's the source of everything. This Yud, when written as itself, is written with three marks, a top, a middle, and an end. It leads on. When written out, this Yud is Yud Vav Dalat. In the male, it stays as Yud Vav Dalit. How it becomes, that's Abba. When it becomes Ima, the Vav Dalit become a He. The Dalit rides above the Vav. This is shown to be not only the upper Ima, but that upper Ima is included in the upper Abba. as potency. The female is within the male as potency of its origin. This miraculous thing is shown in the letter Yud itself, in the drop, in the drop of semen, the seed. This miraculous thing of the Yud and the He being within the Yud itself. That He as Vav Dalit, with, but the Dalit is written above the Vav, making a He, then proceeds and becomes the Ima. That Ima is a He itself. So it's yud he as the thing, the, the name of Abba Va'ima, which is always tied together. And there's never a separation at that level. There's never a break. 
This is one of the most important things in Judaism. No matter what happens, there's never a break in the upper Abba and Ima. This is like the Shrubim. There's never a break. They're always like a child. A child at play. Before the consciousness gets developed. This in itself is a great mystery, but you know, it's not so mysterious when you think about it or repeat it a couple of times. That's your bodily daily life. That's your family life. That's your level of being. So now, let me ask you, do we have to go any further than this? Do we have to know any more than this? That in the initial yud is the initial female attached to the male in you. And that anything out of that is practically out of the Garden of Eden. Anything out of that is multiplicity where, where unity and singularity well, let's call it unity, actually prevails. Do we have to know more than what I just said? It's fancy to know the names of all the kings. It's fancy to know the prayers by heart, to know the Torah by heart. How many verses are in Shia Hasharim? But let's get back to our essences. Let's get back to our simplicities. For the multiplicity of, of websites, likings, and friends. Friends that you've never met. Let's return to the simple Can that be so bad? In a world that's misplaced, the great essence and behavior of man into a commoditized form of workable time, money, Bitcoin. Manipulation of your time, your diet, your stocks, your bonds. Losing sight of the real Jewish essence that is found not even within Torah study, but within study of the self, which is only a true reflection of Torah. Return to the essence body of the letters themselves for meditative vehicles that they are. Do we have to proceed deeper than this? The deepest levels are the most mundane. In the words that I'm speaking to you, in the feelings that I'm giving to you. Do we need more than this? How to get to this is the lifetime pursuit. How to get to where we were originally.